this is the speed of light experiment and this is a nitrogen laser that pulses at 337 nanometer light so that's ultraviolet light and it pulses at approximately 20 Hertz and uh, the pulses are about 100 nanoseconds long and so just to demonstrate you can see if I put a card uh, in front of the laser you can see that ultraviolet light the ultraviolet light exits the laser here and travels from the laser to a beam splitter the beam splitter then sends light uh, perpendicularly uh, towards detector 1 here or uh, the other half of light goes through the beam splitter and hits detector 2 here and so zooming out we can see the laser over here the light comes out strikes the beam splitter and goes in two directions uh, continues to the left or turns perpendicularly towards the other detector and detector 2 here is on a rail that can be adjusted back and forth and what we'll do is connect these detectors to an oscilloscope and here on the screen you can see uh, two, a yellow and a white curve those correspond to the two different detectors uh, and ideally those would be square pulses but because of the way the detectors work they are actually uh, somewhat exponential looking and you can see that because uh, we're sort of zoomed out on the oscilloscope that those two pulses appear to uh, lie on top of one another. One is a little bit uh, more intense than the other one. The yellow has a larger peak than the white one, um, but that's just from uh, the experimental setup. That's not that the light has actual different intensities necessarily. And so I'm going to zoom in on the oscilloscope so that we can see this rising edge for the two different detectors. And so I'm currently set to uh, where the scale on the oscilloscope is such that each square block corresponds to two nanoseconds. And we know that the speed of light is approximately uh, one foot travel for every nanosecond that passes. And so now what I'm going to do is come back to this detector and I'm going to slide detector 2 very far along the track. And so we can see now that it looks maybe like a meter or a little over a meter away. And if we come back to the oscilloscope we can see now that the white trace has moved further to the right, so it's taking longer before it gets detected on the oscilloscope. Here's a diagram of the speed of light experiment using a pulse laser. So on the left, we have a laser that emits 337 nanometer light, that's in the UV. It will pulse 20 times per second, so 20 hertz, and each pulse will be about 100 nanoseconds. So if we think about what's called the pulse train coming out of the, the laser, there will be a spacing between uh, what is optimally a square wave uh, light pulse train, and the spacing between each pulse is going to be 1 20th of a second. The line down here at the bottom corresponds to the light being off, and these higher points correspond to the light being on and so it's on for approximately 100 nanoseconds and then the spacing again between each of those is 1 20th of a second. The rest of the setup consists of a beam splitter, a detector that is straight in front of the laser that we'll call detector 2, and a detector that is perpendicular uh, to the direction that the original pulse train is traveling and we'll call that detector 1. So let's imagine that we can track one pulse as it travels through this experiment. And so we have this pulse. It's going to be traveling to the right. And it will come to the beam splitter. And half of the light will get split towards detector 1. 
the other half towards detector 2. So the intensity of these light pulses becomes less, and one is now traveling upward, and one is traveling to the right. And we have this distance marked between the beam splitter and detector 2 that we'll call delta x, and that is what we're going to vary throughout the experiment. Um, but for each measurement, what we do is we set delta x here, we leave detector 1 in its position, and these light pulses are going to split and travel to the two detectors. When this pulse reaches this detector, we will start a timer to say that uh, we have detected a pulse. And this one is traveling to detector 2. It has a little further to travel, so it takes a little bit longer. Uh, so at this point, this light pulse that has split has traveled the same distance from the beam splitter towards detector 1 as it has traveled towards detector 2. And uh, again, when this pulse gets to this detector, we start timing. We call that time equal to 0. And then this pulse is going to continue traveling, eventually getting to detector 2, and that will occur at a time that we call delta t. And we need this pulse to reach the second detector before the next pulse from the laser can get to detector 1, so that we're counting the amount of time from a pulse hitting this detector to the same original pulse getting to detector 2. Uh, otherwise, we'll get confused whether or not the detection in detector 2 was from the previous pulse or the next pulse. Uh, and so it's important that the spacing delta x here isn't too large so that it would take 1 20th of a second for the next pulse to come out. Here we see a zoomed in view of the beam splitter and the two detectors, detector 1 and 2. The beam splitter is positioned at 560 millimeters, that's the center of it, on the ruler that you can see in the background of the image here. And the two detectors are approximately equally spaced away from the beam splitter. Because they're equally spaced, we see that when the signals come in, they rise at about the same time. So we can't really distinguish a time difference between these two signals. The channel 1 signal, the yellow one, is a little bit larger um, so it peaks higher, but it's not shifted to the left or right from the white detector 2 curve. So currently the detector 2 is positioned at 460 millimeters along this ruler. That's 100 millimeters away from the beam splitter that's positioned at 560 millimeters. What we're going to do is shift that another 100 millimeters further away from the beam splitter. So now it's at 360 millimeters along the ruler, which is 200 millimeters away from the beam splitter. So we're going to use that 200 millimeters as the distance delta x in our experiment. When we do that, we see that the white detector curve shifts over to the right just a little bit, and now we can tell that there's a time difference between the two arrivals. So we can use this position of 200 millimeters is our delta x, and we can use the time difference that we see here on the oscilloscope screen. The oscilloscope is set up so that one block is one nanosecond, and that's divided into 0.2 nanosecond increments. The next measurement will be at 260 millimeters, so increasing by 100 millimeters one more time. We can see on the oscilloscope screen that the detector 2 white curve is moving further to the right of the detector 1 yellow curve, and so we can measure the time difference between those curves. For the rest of the video, I'm simply going to show the position of detector 2 and then the oscilloscope screen so that you can measure the time difference between the arrival at detector 1 and the arrival at detector 2. The position of detector 2 will increase by 100 millimeters in each of the different measurements. After the detector 2 is at 500 millimeters distance from the beam splitter, two different tracks are connected and so those 
the counting starts over on the new track and the new 100 millimeter distances will be at 710, 610, 510, etc. Uh, as measurements on those tracks.